Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist. So today, Rafa got started on the 36 horsepower motor for the beautiful Prairie Be Beige 57 Beetle. Made quite a bit of progress on it, uh, coming together very nicely. Again, this is going to be a very, very nice motor. So pulling out all the stops on this one, all the correct hardware, everything super nice, super correct for this motor. Uh, this is not the correct distributor. We're in the middle of, of restoring the correct one for it now. But yeah, this is going to be a really nice motor. So all the right parts, all the right hardware, super nice. Uh, so yeah, it's going together pretty good. Probably be finished up in uh, a day or two at this rate uh, with the possible exception of the distributor and the fuel pump and the carburetor that uh, we're waiting on some parts for some of those, uh, namely uh, zinc plating. I think we've got about everything else or we'll have everything else for those things tomorrow, but zinc plating uh, of the hardware for those things, we probably won't have those back till Wednesday. So uh, we'll see, but anyway, it's going together pretty nice. So Rafa was pretty focused on that today. Myself, I did a few things on the 69 EV bug, just small things. One of which is putting in the uh, the knobs for, for locking and unlocking the doors. Again, small things, but trying to keep things moving along here. The other thing was we put in the very cool um, speedometer that we got from Speed Hut. So this is a GPS speedometer so that the car will have a GPS antenna on it. It's just sitting right there at the moment, but I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to put it. It's supposed to have a clear view of the sky, so I want to put it somewhere where it has a view of the sky without being too ugly on the outside of the car, so we'll see where that ends up. But yeah, the speedometer is really nice looking. I don't think I showed this on a video previously, but we had it made with the Volkswagen style face that Speed Hut offers. 120 miles an hour, which I, I hope the customer doesn't try and drive the car 120 miles an hour, although it will probably do it. And uh, we put our logo there in the center with the car uh, owner's permission. And then it's got a high beam in the middle and then the two turn signals. No idiot lights for oil pressure, needless to say. No idiot light for the fan belt, needless to say. So kind of plain in that sense that there's no idiot lights other than the, uh, the high beams if you can call that an idiot light and then the turn signals so got that in today and went ahead and wired it in got all the wiring in pretty neatly pretty much tucked back uh, back behind here so not too ugly looking this is the little port for the um, gps antenna so that'll have a uh, black wire connecting to it that'll go to wherever we end up putting that antenna. So that's about it on the car itself today. The other thing in interest of keeping the car moving forward is one of the last big things for us to do other than uh, the EV, which is um, mostly being handled by our uh, partner shop, is putting the doors together. So I went ahead and dug out the regulators and so on for the doors the the glass unfortunately the glass has some uh, some scratches on it so we'll see if we're going to end up using those windows or not we may need to end up ordering new glass the regulators are kind of gross looking but uh, they they work pretty nice i tested them out so it may just be a matter of of cleaning those up and using them the vent windows are in okay shape um there are some scratches that I saw on the frames uh, might be on the other side not too happy with but we'll get these cleaned up and disassembled and then decide what we're doing or if we need to replace or re-chrome some of the parts for those so again just trying to keep things moving forward here getting the uh, the windows hopefully ready to install I think we already ordered all of the new seals and everything for those so we should be able to rebuild them uh, once we pull them apart and then uh, decide if we want to use the uh, the glass that we have or if we have to order new glass. I did notice that one of the latches here is busted, so we have to at least get a new latch. This latch on this vent window seemed okay, so we may go ahead and use that. The other thing in interest of keeping the cars going is for the 64 One Family Beetle, 
we went and dug the uh, the interior out of our of our storage uh, container that we have, and we found the appropriate material for it, which is this really cool kind of pinstripe material. The the stripes are pretty much gray. It's almost it's almost like it's got a little bit of green in it with uh, on the edge of each stripe is like a very thin brown stripe. I think this fabric uh, or vinyl was mostly used in Europe, but this US car had it. Again, the car is a 64. So we did find this material, West Coast Classic Interiors up in Oregon has it. So we're gonna buy, I think, uh, four yards of this material from them. And then we need a few yards of the this more plain material, which is kind of a gray green that goes around the edges. And then we need to get the, the sort of off-white or ivory that'll be used on these uh, the stripes on the door panels. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and, and try and get all this material on order and get our upholstery guy. Might as well go ahead and start on the interior for the car. And hopefully by the time they finish that up, then the body will be back from, uh, from body work and paint and then this thing will really start going together pretty fast. The front seats, one of the seats, the driver's side, the, the back section here is actually uh, later. It's like a 65 or later. You can see how the top of it is, is rounded here. This one with the, I guess, kind of squared off top is correct. So I think what happened was, again, this car was T-boned really hard on the driver's side. And so I'm guessing what happened is that the, the driver's seat got pretty mangled when the car got T-boned on that side. And so they replaced uh, maybe the whole seat or at least the, the back here, which again is incorrect. So we need to hunt down a new back for the seat. Uh, the bottom I think is fine. It's just a matter of finding the new uh, top. And then we'll pull all the upholstery off everything. We'll sandblast and clean the frames and send them out for powder coating and painting and get those all ready and then once we have the the vinyl then we'll send these off to our upholstery guy and and get them all looking new and correct for this car so that's pretty much the highlights from today uh some other little minor odds and ends here and there but nothing nothing really worth mentioning so we will see you guys again tomorrow. For anyone that may be new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you like our content, please feel free to hit like. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks.